Time for the fan favorite segment where we give a focus to international football. Touchline is the show on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike in studio. I'm with two gentlemen. One of them is an Arsenal supporter. Then there is a Man United diehard. And both of them have acquired the services of new players. Nicolas Pepe, the Ivorian. I saw him in the African Cup of Nations. Is he a good signing, Fred Openda? Actually, uh, since uh, Nai Emery came... Uh, came to Arsenal, he's been missing a, a, a proper winger. Uh, that's why I think he went and uh, captured this young, very young, uh, young, uh, young boy who has a lot of room for improvement. So, uh, uh, generally, I think it's a, a fantastic signing for him. It will uh, really help uh, maybe now uh, to add that pace in the forward line of Arsenal. So next season, the, 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 this coming season, yeah. I think uh, many defenders should be wary of this young man. They, they should actually because there's someone who scored more than 30 goals for Lille last season and they can play from both wings as a forward line. It's good for a 4 3 3 formation. You can play right or left, so you can play as a center forward. So he's a very good player for Arsenal. And if they use him very well, he's going to add to the goals that the forward line of Arsenal had. Last season, they had over 50 goals through Abuma Young and Lacazette. So you're adding another double digit scoring winger onto your side so there's a player who is going to give you impetus forward line and other tactical players that the coach can use to win matches he was the second top scorer in french league one with Lille fc behind kilian Mbappe, and he, he was actively involved in contributing several assists in that uh, league but as we commend arsenal for acquiring the services of a top a player who has a bright future, who is ambitious career-wise, there is a concern with regards to your defense. Actually, uh, uh, we have had uh, names being thrown here and there about our defense line. Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal's, Arsenal's problem last season was mainly the defense because we had one of the top scorers in the league. But now the leakage of that defense line has been the issue. And remember, our captain, uh, Loro Koscielny, is, is uh, once out. Uh, remember, the, the, the young men we had in that, uh, in, in the, in that uh, position in the central defence in the name of Holding uh, got injured and that hampered his uh, maybe uh, that, uh, get, get getting that versatility in, that, uh, in the, in the defence line. So what we really need to do is maybe uh, the remaining five, uh, five, five days, five, six days, we should be able to, to get a new centre-back and maybe a left-back. What is going uh, uh, in the, from the corridors of uh, Arsenal? We are, we are hearing that we are close to agreeing uh, for a deal for uh, Tierney from Celtic. It will be a good signing. He's also a young, a young man who has a lot of room for improvement. But then, what about, uh, about our center, center halves? Because we are playing against Barcelona tomorrow in our last uh, friendly match, and they are saying that there are talks that they might be going for Coutinho again. But Chances are very high that Coutinho might come on loan to Arsenal and that will exactly. be a big boost. But still, but the problem lies with in your defence. Actually, they were saying, why go for Coutinho? These guys have Umtiti, who's now, it looks like a surplus requirement at the, the camp. No, yeah. why can't we go and uh, negotiate a, a deal for this guy? You know, so uh, let's, let's see what pans out. But we really need a centre half and maybe a left back. And talking about the defense, Man United yesterday in the evening, uh, big news that uh, came out was the acquisition of Harry Maguire from Leicester. United has been chasing for his services, but finally, ultimately, late at the end of the tunnel, but 80 million pounds. Worth it? Wow. You, you might argue the other way around, but I think that's what the market value for uh, Maguire has got to be. But there's a player who helped England get into the semi finals of the World Cup. They just concluded World Cup. So he was a key figure for the defense for the English national team. He's won the Premier League with Leicester. So I think Leicester valued their player and saw that he's an 80 million worthy kind of a player. And that's where Manchester United went for him. And his price tag aside, this is a player who brings stability onto your defense line. He's a cool, calm player who is very good with aerial football, who is very good with tackling, and is going to calm that Manchester United defence because they needed 
a captain. They needed a leader in defense, and Maguire has proved that with the Leicester and the English national team. So it's a very good addition to that backline, considering that Manchester had young, a, a very young backline that was not experienced enough, and him at 26 years of age, he has already proved that he has got the experience to play at the highest level. And a lot of uh, signings have been reported this particular week. Idris Aguay, who featured for Senegal in the African Cup of Nations, inspiring them to finish second in the 32nd edition of Continental Showpiece, moving from Everton to the French money backs Paris Saint Germain. What will be his impact? Going by the scores that have been released this particular afternoon, PSG are playing Lille. I have seen Ander Herrera starting uh, as the defensive midfielder. Do you think he will get regular playing football? Yeah, it will, it will, because you realize that uh, PSG now have got to get out of the toy business of buy the best person to come and offer you the best services to win the trophies. And they have realized that it's not working actually. You just have to buy good players who can come and mold yourself with the team and win. That's why you had someone like Marco Verratti saying, if Neymar does want to stay with the team, sell him. A player like Idris Gouye is a player, if you saw from the Africa Cup of Nations, he plays with intensity going forward. He's a player who can maintain 90 minutes of playing high tempo football, and that is what the coach was going for, and Gouye brings you that. Ander Herrera is another player who plays the same, same kind of football. Him playing in that deep position for Paris Saint-Germain is a player who is going to influence tempo from the back line. And for Paris Saint-Germain is a team that builds from the back, and if you have got a very good defensive-minded player midfield, at the moment you win the defense, attacking from the deep in the midfield will be key for PSG in the UEFA Champions League. And talking about Everton, they are bolstering their squad. Of course, they are still chasing after the services of Wilfred Zaha from Crystal Palace. I understand Moise Keane. Uh, yes. was signed uh, from Juventus yeah. and is now at the Goodison Park. What will be the impact of the uh, young fella at the Goodison Park? Of course, you, you know, when, when, when coaches go for signings, uh, they, they know what they are looking for. They have gone for Ken, who is very young, uh, for 40 million. I think it's not, it's not a, a, a bad uh, price tag for, for the young man who, who uh, made some impact yes. last season uh, in Italy. So they are going to add uh, that depth that uh, the, uh, Everton need, and if they will get Zaha, yeah. God willingly, I think now the top uh, the top uh, top eight teams, if we can put it so, or the top half of the table uh, going next uh, for next season will be very very competitive. And uh, if you see the current uh, the, the kind of money teams are being able to spend right now, yeah. leave alone the the former top four uh, finishers, but. Each and every team right now yes. with, the, with the, 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 the cash out there is going for the best, best players. And if Everton can be able to get uh, that deal over the line for, 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 for Wilfred Zaha, then trust me, they are going to, to form a, a, a very good team that will uh, scare even the top four uh, finishers of uh, the, 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 the ones that we are used to. So let them uh, try their best and maybe if they, they get him, trust me, they'll... You know, you know... When I had the Moise Kine uh, signing for Everton, uh, it came to my mind that Marco Silva is a very calculating man. He knew what kind of forward he was looking for. People will be like, why are you offloading Idris Agwe, being that he's a very good player and plays for Senegal? But look at the players brought in that he has, forward. Line. He has Fabian Delph yeah. in the midfield. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, but look at the player. And he, has, he also has Andre Gomez. Yeah. Look at the play he went and bought Moise Kine. Was one, I think, one of the top scorers in the Italian league with Juventus. That people never saw how good he was or how good he is. But him coming to Everton will be a shock to many because this is a top, top class striker that Everton will be having. And if they combine him with Wilfred Zaha as they are going at the moment, Everton will be a very tough, tough team. Overall, the transfer rumors, uh, Man United and uh, Juventus are still negotiating stuff on against <laughs> each other over, you know, yeah. Paulo Dybala and Romelu Lukaku swap. And in case that signing doesn't go through, Inter Milan might be in pole position to acquire the Belgian international, who has insisted that he wants his way out of Old Trafford. But what are the permutations that the transfer is possible or the swap is practical? Uh, most I, I, I hear uh, the, the, that uh, the, 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 
the maybe the deal between Lukaku and his agents with uh, Juve is through. Now the problem is the other way around. Dybala, Dybala accepting is, that exactly. he will yeah. leave Turin for Old Trafford. Yeah, and he, he is demanding uh, 350 uh, per week, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for a player who scored less than uh, 10 goals last season. Yeah. Actually, six. He scored five <laughs> goals. I don't know in how many appearances. And two as is uh -huh. uh, uh, to come and demand uh, for three fifty a week, three fifty thousand uh, pounds a week. I, I, but, I don't but think. I think it's which reason, which factor can we attribute the number of goals he scored? Is it because uh, he was given less games and he didn't get regular playing time? No, maybe. I, I, no, no, no. no. But maybe he would have surpassed that if he played, he played regularly. No, I think he played regularly. It's only <laughs> played, that maybe last regular. season uh, his form uh, really dipped. Yeah. And uh, I think he's, go he's asking for all this kind of money because he knows... So the demands, his United, demands are unrealistic. Exactly. You, they, he, he knows that United have the money. Yeah, Influence of Sanchez. Eh? Exactly. You, if you are going Look to United, Sanchez. go for money. Go for money. Yeah. Go for money. You know, yeah. that's, that's what is really, I think, holding up the deal. Yeah. But hopefully, uh, for, for, for the parties involved, yeah. they, they should be able to resolve this uh, issue in the, within the next maybe four days uh, uh, before the, 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 the window shuts. I saw a certain poster by Bleacher Report. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it consisted of players, especially strikers, uh, who have scored several goals since joining English Premier League. The likes of Alan Shearer, uh, uh, Wayne Rooney, Didier Drogba, now Kun Aguero. You know, plenty of them. And Romelu Lukaku, coincidentally, is on the list. Why part ways with <laughs> someone who can bang goals for you and still at the preference of... Uh, Marcus Rashford because he's the one who's making Lukaku to leave Old Trafford because he thinks uh, even if he stays that striking position is not guaranteed of it. I think uh, Ren Moller's thing once said that Romelu Lukaku is not a Manchester United player and when you look at it you come to realize at the moment he's not actually a Manchester United player. The teams that he has played for and scored goals like Chelsea, Everton, West Bromwich Albion. Yeah, they play to Romero Lukaku's strengths. They play putting the ball in the box where Romero Lukaku is. But you look at Manchester United, for the last season that Romero Lukaku has been there, he has been suffering to get the balls himself. So United is not playing to Romero Lukaku's strengths of football. That's why he might be leaving Old Trafford. And even if he leaves, Manchester United can still rely on Marcus Rashford. He's young, he's English, he's scoring goals. They have got Andre Gomez, the new kid who has come in. Daniel James also lingered. And I think also at the end of the day has got to be the manager's wish, the manager's style of play. You might come to realize that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's style of play does not also play to Romelu Lukaku, he's someone who is going for younger players. Players were a bit uptight, not as big as Romelu Lukaku. Players who can run back to back, they can track back and do all that. And I think that's why he can go. And also the player himself has realized that there's a lot of serious competition for me at Manchester United. And if I need regular playing time, then I better move on to other pastures. Uh, overally, you know, the saga surrounding Nima's move from French money bags of Paris Saint-Germain to Real Madrid <laughs> is still on. Should we expect the Brazilian, the 26-year-old, uh, to move to Spanish football, where he was before? He was at the Barcelona. He wanted a place where he would stamp authority because at the Camp Nou, Messi is still there and Messi is, you know, uh, getting the attention. I think uh, what will happen is the window closes next week and I don't see a move for, for yeah. him. He, he'll, he'll get punished because uh, you cannot, and, and uh, we have said this several, you cannot gag your club into selling you. You, you refuse to report to training, you are given a date to come back and then you, you, you bring up excuses, you know. They are not going to sell him and he's going maybe to now uh, sit on the bench for a better part of the, the start of the season until maybe January when maybe a, a move uh, would uh, maybe come into fruition. But for him, uh, gagging the, the PSG leadership, uh, you know, is not good. And, and as uh, Robert uh, had said early, you know, they made a mistake. It was a project Neymar that bring Neymar in to, for us to win the Champions League, but he has not delivered, you know. And uh, I know uh, PSG can afford uh, uh, maybe... Uh, uh, cheaper options 
uh, maybe wage wise yeah and uh, maybe uh, fee wise younger players who can do the job uh, for PSG because we all know that uh, the French league is not that competitive as compared to the maybe to the EPL or to the Spanish uh, La Liga so they can still get other players who are cheaper and still win the the, the league with, without Neymar so but but but, them, but 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 what is the solution for a player who wants his way out and is insisting that his future is not is at his current place? Because I've seen Zlatan Ibrahimovic speak yeah. that you know Man United should sell the likes of Lukaku and Paul Pogba because even if they stay, they wouldn't offer their hundred percent. Should clubs decide to sell a player once he expresses an interest to leave? The problem is the money factor. Realize that because there's a contract signed, and the moment a player signed into a team, the contracts go far beyond him putting that signature on paper. You've got two sponsorships with you, you've got image rights, you've got shirt sponsorship. So, the moment you've signed that deal, the financial people have already calculated how you are going, what you are going to offer to the team past you playing football. So, the moment you yourself you want to cut your contracts short. Unless you have the money to give these guys back, then they can release you. They cannot release you with you saying that. You look at the case of Paul Pogba, where everybody is saying that Paul Pogba is leaving Manchester United and all, all the other things. Away from football, you realize that Paul Pogba is a very good financial commercial partner for Manchester United. There is no advert for Adidas that Manchester is going to make without Pogba being in that area realize that his t-shirt sales, the jersey sales for Paul Pogba are up there. So there's a player, if you have tied him to a five-year contract, unless your agent and the club that is buying you is willing to give way, way, a lot, a lot of money to cut that contract short for you to live. I think this is the case of Jose Mourinho. When United decided to cut his contract short, they had to pay him more than 23 million. So that, in that you have to pay the remainder of so that contract, contract yeah. for you to live. And players might not be have that kind of money to pay the remainder of that contract. And also, the clubs that you want to buy cannot have the, those kind of amounts to pay for that. And then another factor we are forgetting is the agents. We realize that some of these agents who are coming like Mino Raiola, can force players to certain kind of contracts where they are going to gain a lot of money or for themselves to gain and forget the player. And away from matters transfer, let's speak about something that will be happening tomorrow. It's a Super Sunday because back home as we speak of Chan qualifier between Kenya and Tanzania overseas in England, uh, the two arch rivals, Liverpool and Manchester City, teams that we haven't seen much of their transfer activity because they believe what they have currently is enough to steer them to another sterling performance next season. Man City, remember, dominated English football winning English Premier League title FA. And the, and the Carabao, while Liverpool won UEFA Champions League, and something that has been elusive for them since 2005, uh, the Istanbul memories. Yes. Tomorrow's clash, that is Community Shield. Uh, it will be. What uh, are the stakes? I think it will be a good uh, season opener, cut and razor for the, the, the upcoming fi uh, first fixture on Friday, yeah. beating Liverpool again. Uh, so uh, we should just expect, uh, expect a normal friendly game. Uh, maybe whoever rides his luck uh, will be able to lift the, the, the shield. But I, 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 I'm sure uh, Liverpool will be missing some of their key players because of their participation in the AFCON. Uh, Afcon. So we'll see at, at least uh, young players given runouts uh, against the, the citizens uh, from the Liverpool side. Although for, 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 for Man City, we, we, they will be only missing Marin. Yeah, all yeah, the other guys are back. Yeah, all the other guys and are back. And Mares never gets uh, yeah. regular football, yeah. so it's yeah. not a big blow for them. Actually, I was wondering, why are not people going for Mares? <laughs> because uh, that guy, if, if he gets somewhere, he can play regular football. Yes, his, he's, he's, he's his impact player. is so huge. Exactly. And do you think but the outcome of tomorrow's game will determine how English Premier League will fare on? Very much so, because tomorrow's game is all about statement making where you stamp your authority in the league and say, I'm here for this league. You know, Manchester have defended this league twice. Liverpool have knocked on that door twice, but they have not made it to the top. Even if they, they made to 80 points, the league was won by, I think, 81 points by Manchester City. So,
tomorrow's game is a statement of who is ready to battle it out in the Premier League. And usually, the ancestors are with the winners of the Community Shield. If you win the Community Shield, chances are that you're going to win the league. I don't think so. As I won that Mo most of the time. <laughs> well, <two> consecutive <laughs> seasons that we never saw. Even <laughs> you didn't but even come close to, to, to winning the uh, league. Uh, when but, United uh, wins the shield, yeah, you yeah. usually <laughs> win the league. But <laughs> what, what I can say is, as, as you had said, we yeah. have not seen a lot of movement from these two teams uh, yeah. in the current transfer window. Only yeah. Man City signing Rodri from uh, Spain. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool, we have not really seen any movement. Liverpool, actually, they have also signed, I think, one. 16 yeah. year old player, yeah, that they, yeah. but I think it's these teams from last season they had depth on their yeah, side, exactly. They, they, have had, depth. they had many players who are good enough. Players can come from injury, like Mendy, who came Coming from back. an injury, was mm. like a new signing yeah. for Manchester City. Yeah, you look at uh, Liverpool, Chamberlain will be back. But that's like Keita be a new signing, Keita, that's like a new signing. So yeah. it is going to be a hugely contested, but for Liverpool, their pre season has not been good. As they got <laughs> smashed three yeah, has not was... been showing yeah. the results of a champion. Eh? <laughs> they yeah. drew two all against Sporting Lisbon, and yeah. uh, Jurgen Klopp was impressed uh, with Bruno Fernandes, <laughs> though only yeah. him not to sign for Man United, <laughs> and at the same time said that in yeah. case he moves to Old Trafford, it will be, you know, exactly. a, an excitement watching him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, the young uh, the young man in Bruno Fernandes is now starting to attract a lot of interest. I hear Real Madrid are also poking their noses. Uh, towards getting Be his because signature. Real Madrid is a team in trouble. <laughs> 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 but they brought Zinedine Zidane back, a man who won them two Champions League titles consecutively. Back back. Remember, Zinedine Zidane won with them three trophies, the UEFA Champions League trophy and a Liga title, with, not with his team, a team that was made by another person. So for him, he was running it. Now this is him building his own machine. How is he going to fail on that? You already have problems with Gareth Bell. The, the agent is like, if Gareth Bell is living here, <laughs> it's a permanent move, it's not a loan move. Yeah. And they are asking an amount more than 110 million for any club to, so, to price away Zinedine Zidane from there. And you have got him already with Bell and Zidane are not seeing eye to eye. You have got an aging squad. In Real Madrid, look at Tony Cross is now in his status. Benzema in his status. Marcelo. Luka Modric. Luka, Luka Modric. Modric. So, how many players are you going to buy to make your team good enough to compete? And at this time in the transfer window, you are not attracting. Remember, re good remember, players. this is this is a team that has already signed five, five, yes. six players. Yes. New players, but we have not. Completely, we have not seen the impact yeah. that we were expecting uh, from the likes of Hazard. Yeah. You know, he's been poor, and I, uh, I, I hear the corridors, uh, 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 the corridors of power in yeah. the Spanish capital have started bringing issues. You know, we cannot be buying such players, and uh, they end up you not see, giving us yeah. a, a good show. With you Madrid, know? is you buy and you perform. There is yeah, no that's shortcut. Quick <laughs> result. <laughs> exactly. There's no shortcut. Eh? <laughs> quick you come results. in and perform, and Eden Hazard, I think. That is the kind of pedestal is going to be put at. You are the guy coming to replace Cristiano Ronaldo. Can you even get to half of the oh, impact? Is, it? is of it he world class? He is world card. He is good, but he is no Cristiano Ronaldo. That's the main difference. So Cristiano Ronaldo is the fulcrum of Madrid. Yeah, I think uh, they, they really missed the the goals yeah. of Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. last season, and that uh, leadership, the leadership that Cristiano Ronaldo had, they missed it, and I think it's going to yeah. take time. To, to replace him uh, I, perfectly. I, you, you, remember, you remember Julian Lopetegu, the, yes. the Spanish coach, when he said that uh, my son was robbed the 30 goals. <laughs> and yes. that is a fact. Exactly. Cristiano Ronaldo could score 30 plus goals for Real Madrid. He's off. Who is the next person to score the 30 goals? And if you don't have the 30 goals from Cristiano Ronaldo, how are you going to perform in this league? You are, you are conceding goals, you are not scoring. You These guys are making us to digress from what we were speaking about. The community shield final between City and Liverpool tomorrow. And they are so much passionate about transfers. Hopefully because of their weak squads, Arsenal and United respectively. So looking forward for their coaches, Unai and Solskjaer, to bolster the team ahead of season kickoff. But another cup final.
set for this particular evening, Borussia Dortmund against Bayern München. That is German Cup. Two teams have dominated German football, but more so uh, the Bavarians have done it a notch higher winning, I think, Bundesliga titles. <laughs> yeah, How many times, times running? Seven, seven times yeah. running. And cup final, you know, is another... Uh, it's different dynamics. What, what, what I'm really uh, looking forward to is uh, to see how they are going to replace now the, the two legends, Ajahn, Ajahn Robben and, and Frank Ribery. Frank Frank Ribery. Frank Ribery. They, they, have, they have young men in... Exactly. in, in That's why they, they have they, the legs uh, of Coleman. Yeah, can Kingsley. Yeah. yeah, they have uh, the young man they signed from Arsenal. What's the name? Uh, yeah, I remember Sad the, the uh, Ganabra. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I think that there are two young men who can play from the, the width very, very well. And Ginabri played very well during Champions League exactly, football exactly. campaign but, but last season. Kovac, the Bayern Munich coach, wanted Leroy's son. He even came in public exactly. and now he has been made to apologize <laughs> on his way of, of looking for Leroy's son. And the paper has also put an ultimatum on Leroy. You either stay or go. Yeah. So we don't know how that is going to pan out. But last season, Borussia Dortmund are them, have themselves to blame. They were like eight points clear off Bayern Munich. Bayern came from behind and won the league, I think, in the last Sunday of the league to win the trophy and with one match. I think Borussia Dortmund have got what it takes considering the signings that they did, the likes of Hazard coming onto their side. And these are players who can go ahead and push Bayern Munich to the brim. Remember? Now they've brought in Hazard. They've also brought in Matt Hamels to boast that their defense is back at Borussia Dortmund. So they've got players to go and play. And Bayern, with their aging squad, the likes of Muller, the likes of Boateng, think Borussia can give them a run for their money. I think so. I think uh, because uh, now, uh, as we've said, uh, we, we saw the, the, the uh, uh, Ribery and Robin being very pivotal to, yes. to that uh, yes. attack line of... Uh, of uh, Bayern. So for 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 this uh, evening, I think they the, the Borussia lost uh, a good player in Pulisic who came back to his mother club Chelsea. Yes. But as you're saying, I know they have the, the depth to, yeah. to to go against a Bayern side that won the the, the, the league last la season, but yeah. have lost two yeah. very very good uh, wingers. Yeah. So it's it's a case of uh, waiting and see uh, and try to see how Kovac will be able to replace the two legends that uh, left uh, I, very because he has only signed i think benjamin pavard mm -hmm. the fullback for france is the one who has come on to that side but he also has a big rebuilding process to do because his key players are also getting really really old on that side and they are moving away and the new players that he's going to bring and the young players who are on that team they have got to prove that they can play for borussia dortmund they have a good team they have strengthened very well and they can push Bayern Munich to the brim. Fantastic conversation on the touchline this particular afternoon. Every Saturday, one, two, three, we're keeping it sporty, talking matter, sporting disciplines, and especially at this particular hour, the fans on fan favorite segment where we talk about international football. This time round, it matters transfers and what's coming up tomorrow, Manchester City against Liverpool. And remember, Patrice Evra, former United defender, he's featured for several clubs in Europe. Juventus, Marseille, West Ham United, short stint though. He announced retirement last week. What do you remember Evra for? Me, I just remember him for one thing, for his drama, for <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for his jokes on social media. I love this game. I think one I, humor as tickling man. What, what I can really remember him for is, is his play. He was a very, very good uh, left back, playing alongside the legs of Vidic. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he had a good time a good spell at United so that's 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 what really matters to me but now that he, he decided to hang his boots <laughs> I, I think uh, uh, Patrice Evra one of the few fullbacks who have defined the Roberto Carlos role as a fullback three players who started going forward and tracking back they can defend very well and go back and add attack line onto the front line. A very good player that United had, a very good player that the French national team had, and we are going to miss him. He has done his best, he has won, he has started from the bottom of the streets in Paris up to where he is at the moment, is one player that was defined and played football to the best and the best of his knowledge. We have to come back home and there is a fiasco revolving uh, return, uh, repeat of CAF Champions League uh, between Esperance 
and uh, Wydad and Casablanca, Wydad Casablanca, Casablanca of Morocco. Remember that game uh, faced a lot of controversies and uh, VAR, we are told that it failed to work and one team had to leave the pitch yeah. because their goal was disallowed. And CAF is trying to contemplate rescheduling the date for the fi repeat final and both teams have uh, failed to agree on whether they should play their reluctant because each one of them is insisting that the genuine winners of the competition. What's the way forward for CAF Champions League? Do you think it should take the route for UEFA Champions League? I've seen they have announced that now the final will be neutral venue. Yeah, is that a solution? Uh, that's not the solution. What I think now is uh, being able to get tough penalties for... You know, sometimes we can say that this, these are instances of match fixing. You, know? you, you cannot be able to tell us that this VR was not working mm -hmm. while the players know that the VR was working. Mm -hmm. If it was not working, that would have been communicated earlier that we have an issue with the VR, it's not in use. You know, we know that. But after you disallow a goal and then you, uh, in the 60th minute, you tell us that the VR was not working, then that's, I think, uh, an utter uh, nonsense. And we should be able to, for the, 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 such kind of officials, should be able to get tougher penalties in order to avoid such scenarios before. Because I hear the matter was uh, uh, taken to court uh, for arbitration. Yes. For sport, but yeah. they knocked it back. To, to, to the to CAF to form a committee to 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 give us the fate of, of that uh, th that match. So we, we should be able to maybe in the next few days uh, get uh, a way forward. But we should now uh, place tough orders for uh, penalties for, for for officials who, who cause uh, such a drama. I, I think uh, the court of arbitration has thrown the ball back to CAF because now CAF has, is being told, don't rush into things when you are not ready. For them, I think you see when the what VR did at the Africa Cup of Nations, starting from the quarter-final stage, and also it being introduced at the final of a CAF Champions League final match. This is something you are bringing into the last minute of the game, where you don't have the experienced personnel to man the VAR. So why introduce something which you are not ready for? If you look at the major leagues in the world, even the English Premier League, this is their first time that they are going to try, to try it. So why is CAF rushing against bringing in a technology, which actually most of the teams that will be participating in the Champions League and the Confederations Cup do not even have TV rights in their own homes. They don't have uh, cameras to, uh, to man their game. So why are you subjecting people first when you don't have the human resource, you don't have the expertise to run the VAR, you don't have the VAR itself in good condition to bring it into such a league. So I think it's a matter of take time, invest well, then introduce that mechanism into your game when you are ready to bring it, to bring it into the game. And since I'm at a mad election as the CAF president replacing the former long-serving president Issa Ayatou, he hasn't had a smooth sailing in the office. A lot of scandals have rocked uh, CAF headquarters in Cairo with several suspensions being reported. Do you think the intervention of FIFA and uh, uh, Jan F is called who? FIFA Fernandez. president. Oh, in Infantino. Yeah, Jan, Jan Infantino. Infantino intervention will solve the impasse at the CAF. I think uh, what people have never realized is that football is politics. And the politics of football are actually, I usually say, much, much worse than national politics. Than natural politics. Yeah, it's just that people don't know that this happened. And you realize that Ahmad Ahmad is a South African guy from Madagascar who came to win the Confederations of African Football Presidency, taking it away from the original members, the likes of the West African countries, the Maghreb countries. His hat was been at the helm for 29 years. They had their own things that they were doing there. So this is an outsider who has come on and toppled the establishment. And the moment you topple the establishment, there has to be a backlash. That's why they are fighting him left, right, and center. For FIFA to come in, it's all about streamlining the game. Because these are a federation that for a very long time had issues of corruption, issues of mismanagement, and now you are being streamlined by the head office, the world over, so that you might align yourself to the organization running of football in a very well-manned system. 
Finally, tomorrow we have to be patriotic and wind <laughs> with an update from home. The Chan qualifier between Kenya and Tanzania. You remember uh, during the African Cup of Nations, the two teams played against each other and it was five goal thriller with Kenya winning. Do you think Tanzania will be coming with a revenge mission? They, they, the they first leg ended in stalemate and tomorrow <laughs> a, a draw of goals might give Tanzania an advantage and to edge, yeah, advance. But, but they had their chance yeah. uh, last week, but they never took it. Playing at their home turf. Yes, tomorrow to Tanzania. And the get uh, collection is only 100 bob. So that yeah. means that a lot of fans will be showing up in large numbers to cheer mm -hmm. Arambe stars beat they, they should. Yeah, East African they should, they should because now I think that momentum of us coming back to the football spirit is there let's all go and support Arambe stars no matter the result no matter how we perform just go there sorry and make sure that you support Arambe stars and at the end of the day that's what the boys want the boys just want to be appreciated by their own home fans and the moment we get onto the stadium I told you, you saw the game against Ghana. That stadium was full. And that's adrenaline from the, from the players. The Kenyan side is like, we are not going to let It was our full, fans though, cut us off uh, free declaration of, you know, yeah. Yeah. Non paying it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that one does not. Even 100 bob, they'll still make it. I remember we did Zambia versus Arambe Stars at Nyayo, and it was 200, 500, and we still managed to pack the stadium full. Even Sharks so, against Everton, it yeah, was full yeah, and filled to the rafters. Yeah, yeah. so th let's just go there and support the boys. And at the end of the day, that is the morale they want. They just know that we have the backing of our home fans. And at the end of the day, we need to make them smile. And as I usually say, any footballer, coach, footballer, if you don't make the fans smile, then you are not doing your job. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on this particular show. Third of August and Touchline has been the show. We wind up uh, on that particular note. Uh, Robert Osora and Fred Openda were joining me on the fan zone to dissect international football. But before we do, Fred, what will you be attending to after here? A lot of... Uh, sporting activities happening called Bureau Finals at the Ziwani Grounds, uh, at the League in Dogo, the English Premier League Fans Fan Day happening, and basketball at Nyayo. Which one? Actually, I, I am headed to Ngongrud to, uh, to the APL Fans uh, Fan Day. To represent uh, Arsenal supporters? Exactly. Who've been languishing <laughs> in the... <laughs> <laughs> Out of top four finish. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why I'll be headed for this afternoon and then tomorrow to Kutana to just study. Ozora, Robert, where are you heading to? Uh, I'm just around town. You are around town. I'm <laughs> heading to Nyai National Stadium for basketball. We have to go different routes. So, so no, make sure to Kutana Grauko Biro. That's the hashtag for the final happening at the Ziwani Grounds. Mm. Of course, it's been a pleasure doing this. Let's again do this next Saturday, same time, same place. My name is Max Olwasike. Have a fantastic weekend and keep it sporty. Cheers and God bless. <laughs>